Okay, so hi, we are here at the Elk Grove Village Public Library and welcome to our program about um, uh, the Elk Grove Village Community Garden wrap up. It's actually called the Bob Lawson Living and Giving Garden, um, which is located at Prince of Peace Church at the corner of Elk Grove, I'm sorry, at the corner of Arlington Heights Road and Devon Avenue behind Prince of Peace Church. And I'm here with Michelle Pullman, um, who is um, the leader of the group, and Joan Arrington, who is one of the members, the core me members of the core group that um, was involved in starting this four years ago. And we, um, I also am a member of that group. My name is Nancy Burton Munson from Elk Grove. I also work at Elk Grove Library. And then we have a couple of other members of the core group who um, are not with us on Zoom tonight, but um, very crucial to the, the whole making the garden happen. And that is Diane Snoble and Jamie Roberts Duarte and Sam Duarte, both of, Sam Roberts Duarte, they're both um, key members as well, as well as Diane's husband, Ed. So, um, uh, they're not with us tonight, but uh, we will be here to talk about how the garden went this season. This was season four, a very unusual season for the garden, but nevertheless a successful one. And so to kind of um, get a feel for what happened in the garden this year, we're going to share a video with you. Um, and then we'll come back to our presentation here and talk about some other points that, um, you know, some of what we grew in the garden and uh, new changes in the garden, and as well as, um, you know, how to be involved next year and some other um, kind of hopes and dreams maybe for next year. But so let's um, go to, I'm going to um, switch over now to our um, video if you hold on one second this is about five minutes along so just sit back and enjoy the video okay all right <laughs> Thank you. 
So that was just a little glimpse into our the, the summer of 2020, our season that we're just getting wrapped up on now. So um, we're going to start in um, just to go into a little background. If you happen to miss the video, we will have that posted later that you can watch again. Um, it's kind of soothing to watch and I, I like the uh, all the, mm -hmm. just to see all the pictures of the produce. and. Um, kind of captures the idea of that it's actually a lot of fun working there and, and seeing the progress there. So, um, um, so let's just talk a little bit about, about the garden, like how it got started. We'll just give a little background. So it, I mentioned where it's located. If you have never been there before, it's at, um, located at Prince of Peace Church um, at the corner of Devon and Arlington Heights Roads in the back of the church. And this picture here is an older picture, right, Michelle? Yes, that was before we put the fence up. I thought, yeah. Yeah, so this was maybe from the first or second. I think that's year two. What do you, is that year one or two, Joan? You think that's year one? I think it's year two because of those fences in the back. Yes. I think it's year two. You're right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and the, um, the, uh, there's now, um, and I use my cursor here, there's now a garden down at, at the other end here too, a pollinator garden that was built by an Eagle Scout, which I don't know if that was in the second year. Um, but so the question, the, the garden is actually called the Bob Lawson Living and Giving Community Garden. So Michelle, can you explain who Bob Lawson is? Absolutely. And before I do that really quickly, I just have to say, Nancy, you did a phenomenal job on that video. It brings tears to my eyes. It's so good. And also, I don't know if everybody else knows this. You probably don't, but Joan is the one who takes all of those gorgeous close-up photos. So when you see those beautiful flowers with the insects or the close-ups of the um, tomatoes or anything that's unusual, it's typically a picture that Joan took because um, I think the rest of us tend to do those um, uh, just kind of stand there and do like a big landscape shot. Although Nancy, you've been uh, up in your game this year too. You've had some really good shots. So um, I just wanted to make sure everybody knows that uh, you guys did a great job. That video turned out really nice. So thank you. Yeah, Nancy took some of those great bug, those bug shots, the, uh, the bees. That's cool. Uh, so we have to add um, photography to our list of volunteer opportunities. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If you're a videographer, if you're a photographer, <laughs> um, we need you. So uh, getting back to your question, so who is Bob Lawson? Um, so Bob Lawson 
was a member of Prince of Peace Church. And when we originally met with Prince of Peace to talk about um, using their property, they told us that many years ago, they used to have a garden behind the garage on their property. And they used to grow, I would say the majority of it was tomatoes. And um, the person who started that garden many, many years ago, uh, his name was Bob Lawson. And they had asked us if we would keep the name of the garden. It used to be called the Living and Giving Garden. And we said, of course, that's a great name for it because mm -hmm. we're going to be giving everything to the food pantry. And we named it basically in memory of him. So even though um, that garden had not been around for about four years until we came along and sort of revitalized it and made it bigger and, and added other types of vegetables to it. Bob Lawson was originally the person who started that garden many years ago um, as a church member. So we were just really happy that the church offered that land to us um, because we were just a separate group interested in doing something like this for the community. And they said, hey, we've got land, you've got volunteers, let's work together. So that's how that happened. So yeah, back in the spring then of 2017, um, when we came out to look at this, um, this was green grass. <laughs> there was nothing there. There was no, Nancy. Nancy. There was no what? Oh, weeds. Thank you. <laughs> okay, right. there were weeds there. <laughs> yeah, there was no, in, there was no real uh, obvious garden that had been there. I mean, at the time it was yeah. all just yeah. kind of weedy grassy area right yes okay so um and then in the this is a photo of we were all there that you know here at the, actually at the library for um uh, michelle called to, uh, you know anybody interested in joining um getting together to start start a community garden and um the people in the picture here that were all there that night and um, um, and still all involved now to this day. So it's, and then, so in 2017, that was when it got kicked off um, with the first season of the garden. And um, I don't remember how many pounds of produce were grown at that time. Do you recall? I want to say, okay, our first year was, was small, less than, less than this year. Our second year was around, I think, 600. Yeah, yeah. And then last year we had a huge, huge year. Um, and then wow. as we're gonna talk about, we cut back, for, we have a much lower year yield this year for uh, various reasons, which we will talk about, but um, it was still a beautiful garden this year. Mm -hmm. So thankfully, yeah, it, we, um, the just it is a partnership in that Prince of Peace allows us to use that land and um, it's you know with though we're like there's a limited amount of space there we're like not necessarily room to expand necessarily but we have it has been sort of minute you know made the made the most of the space that's offered yeah right. we've we've had lots of different Lots of the volunteers have had different ideas of how we can utilize that space best. So we've tried different mm -hmm. types of planting. We did some vertical gardening, as you saw in that bean arch that, that you saw in the video, we grew, thing, we grew things vertically. Um, we grew some things in con big containers like the potatoes that we grew this year. Um, and then last year we did very intensive, I think the reason why we got so much last year, we did square foot gardening. So we intensively planted. Um, mm -hmm. so we've tried some different methods and I did forget to mention Prince of Peace has been amazing as far as supporting us as well. They've been uh, really supportive, the, the congregation as well as uh, providing the water, all of the water with the exception of the rainwater, which we save, but all of the other water that comes through our irrigation system is 
given to us by Prince of Peace. So we're very grateful for that. So let's move on to like some of the new things that we added this year, um, new, new improvements um, like this. You, it's, um, I, don't, I don't know if there's a good name for it. I call it a anti-crimping hose device. <laughs> I think it's perfect. Uh, because there is a fence added around the garden, um, you know, and the hose is coming from over here from this direction and it would have to go over this fence and then hook into the irrigation system, um, it would get crimped and then water would get cut off. So um, I think it was built by Don, volunteer named Don. He just did this simple post with a, the hose can lay nicely over the top and doesn't get crimped and it hooks in here to the irrigation, irrigation system. So a simple but valuable improvement. <laughs> yeah. And then what were, what was another, well, kind of a lot to do with the watering system. So, so I can talk a little, can I talk a little about that? Yeah. Nancy? Mm -hmm. um, we had quite a few volunteers this year, including Don, um, Michelle and uh, Bob George also volunteered this year. Um, and they were really instrumental in making that hose um, real work for us, as well as the connection to the irrigation system. We had a lot of leaks before this season. We had a lot of areas where it, it just sometimes would get crimped, like you said, Nancy, not even just there, but in other places as well. So lucky for us, we have some volunteers who are very handy um, and whatever needs to be done, they just go out there and take care of it for us. And when we show up, it's working again, which is really yeah. wonderful. We have some fantastic volunteers. Agree. Yeah. Very talented, very talented yeah. people. We did yeah. find out that, however, because of those leaks, or the reason for those leaks was because we needed a new hose reel. It actually was about, I, I bet it was 15 years old at least. So we did replace that as you have on the list, Nancy. Mm -hmm. um, and then the coolest, one of the cool things that we also got from Don, he built us a little house to keep our hose reel in. So it was right by the spigot. So when we got there to water the garden, the hose was right there instead of having to drag it from, from the garage and it kept it secure and um, we've had a lot of, su of success with it. So that was fantastic that he did that for us. Right. He also built the new sign, which you saw in the video as well, which, or the sign holder, I should say, um, with a, you know, a big wood, wooden, otherwise it was, there was a, um, like a vinyl sign that says the garden's name on it that um, Jamie, I remember Jamie, um, created right it's um, and then that was previously just on the side of the garage and Don built a wooden sign holder with a garden kind a garden bed attached to it that then I know Joan moved all the dirt to fill that up right <laughs> and, yes, I did my favorite job that was okay <laughs> I just say soil moved all the soil <laughs> and then um, Diane picked out some very nice perennial uh, plants for that that are will are to create an extra additional pollinator garden then so any other improvements that were made this year that I'm forgetting I know you have on there that we added more soil and every year we need to add more soil this year it was a garden compost soil mix um, and we'll have to add more next year we also always add for a type of organic fertilizer to the soil before we plant. And we'll do that again next year. In fact, next year we'll probably up our fertilizer, I think, or our organic matter. Um, we don't use any chemicals. So we uh, probably will have to add more next year for sure because we, we plant so much in our beds and our beds aren't very deep. So I think we probably deplete them of nutrients and um, need to re 
refresh them for the next season. Is that the green dirt that you're talking about, Michelle? The, the, uh, did we use that this year? We did use that this year, yes. So we did use green dirt, which is worm compost. Um, so that's the, the, when the worms eat your, your greens and your garbage, um, they excrete what's called vermi compost, and it's very, very good for uh, plants. It's very high in nutrients, so we did use that. We also used um, some other organic uh, fertilizers along with that as well. And I'm hoping, I know last year before we planted, we had added um, leaves, fallen leaves mm -hmm. from the fall. Um, and I think this year, I'm hoping that we have a chance to do that same thing because we definitely need to get as much organic matter as we can back into those beds so we can have them be um, healthy for next season. Okay, so moving on to, well, what exactly did we grow this year? And this is a list of some of the things. There's a few things missing, important things like potatoes is not on this list, but we grew a couple different kinds of potatoes. Um, uh, Joan, did you want to talk about, like, how did the potatoes go this year? Yeah. Yeah, so the potatoes in the past years, we had put them in barrels. I think we had six barrels last year. Um, Diane looked into a lot of different ways to do them, the best ways to grow them, the best ways to, um, to treat them or nurture them as they're growing through the year. And um, she'd watched several videos and some of them were pretty funny that there were even experts on videos that would harvest their potatoes and then there'd be nothing there. So I have a lot of respect for people who can grow potatoes and get a lot of potatoes because I think they are pretty darn tricky creatures. So this year we had the um we had the barrels that we had the prior year and then we also used two large beds and diane um, was able to get some help and get some starters and they were planted and then we mounded up dirt um, and then as the season would go along and the greens would come out of the dirt we would mound up more dirt um, there were two varieties of potatoes that were used and diane kept really good track of what was where so that we could learn from the process. Um, so it was very exciting and you'll see in pictures as we go along um, to get to that point where we harvested because you just don't know what you're gonna get as a treasure. Um, so there were some things that came out very well. Um, the ones when we did them in the ground, of course, we're afraid to dig because we don't want to hurt any potatoes that are in the ground. So that was interesting. Um, I think we learned a lot about, for the ones in the barrels, about how much air that they need and how the water needs to come out. Um, but every year when we do it, it's a learning experience. And it's probably the most fun thing for me in the garden because of the whole treasure and the unknown. You don't know what's under the dirt. Yeah. So, looking forward to doing it again next year. So um, I know when, when, when we first started, the garden like back in the first year we did some more like more like some heirloom vegetables as well and then so this list has really been adapted based on what the food pantries also what they're looking for too is there would you say there's anything like I know this year was a different year altogether because I know we, were, we wrote some things got rotated correct what would you say about that like yeah. um, where they where things were placed this year and how that affected how much we could grow or yes so um that's a good point nancy that you bring up so as i said last year we did square foot gardening so we in intensively planted a lot of plants in small areas and a lot of those plants were tomatoes mm -hmm. so then when this season came along we wanted to be sure that we did not plant tomatoes in the same beds that we had planted tomatoes in last year. We wanted to do crop rotation. So mm -hmm. that left us 
with not as many beds to choose from where we could plant those tomatoes, um, as well as some of the other um, varieties that we were looking to plant. So I would say rotating the crops was one of the reasons why we did not plant as much this year. Uh, the other big reason that we didn't plant as much this year was because right when we were starting to plan was when COVID started mm -hmm. and we had no idea what was going to happen. We didn't know if we were going to be allowed to gather there. We didn't know if people would want to come out there, if they'd feel comfortable. We didn't know if COVID was going to last a couple months or who, who knows. We just had no idea. So we deliberately shrunk the size of the garden by planting a lot less so that if we didn't have that many volunteers, we could still manage it. Yeah. So it was a deliberate decision for a couple different reasons to make the garden much smaller this year. Um, we did still have space though that was available, but we didn't want it to be filled up with plants that we would have to care for and there wouldn't be enough volunteers for. So what we did instead was we planted a lot more flowers. So as mm -hmm. you can see on the list, a lot more sunflowers, zinnias, marigolds, um, just to attract those pollinators. And because we mm -hmm. wanted it to be pretty, if we were gonna put something in there, we wanted it to be beneficial and look nice. And also we didn't have to do anything to them. If we didn't have a lot of volunteers, they would just grow anyway. So the list that you see on here is definitely what we grew this year, but in much smaller numbers um, due to the circumstances. Okay. Okay, let's go on to, so for then what we grow, like how, what is our process for delivering this? Because obviously everything, 100% of what we grow in the garden goes to the food pantries in Elk Grove, and there are three. So there's the Elk Grove Township Food Pantry, and um, I don't know if this was from Diane's visit or Jamie's visit. Somebody went and visited. There was an open house at the new Township Food Pantry recently, um, and this photo is from that. And that's you know they it's really beautiful, nice new facility. Mm -hmm. So that's just one of the locations that um, our produce goes to. And then there's also the Elk Grove Village Food Pantry, which is, I think I have it right, Elk Grove Presbyterian Church, mm -hmm. Tunney, Tunney and Elk Grove Boulevard. Yes. I, I got, okay. Um, and then St. Nicholas Episcopal Church Food Pantry, which is on Ridge. Um, so that's the three places that um, Diane takes the donations. Um, do you know how often those um, she makes deliveries? I said weekly, but well, it just depends on what she's got, right? Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's like in September, it could have been every other day because we were harvesting so much. So she yeah. was going in months, sometimes every day. It depends on, yeah, it depends on what people would drop off because the volunteers would pick, pick, harvest the produce and then bring it to her house and she would sort it and clean it and then try to get it there as quickly as possible. I think there probably were some times where she would go two days in a row in September. Yeah. And you see a lot of those pictures in um, this, in the video that we showed at the beginning, um, mm -hmm. Diane would, um, you know, get all the dirt off, rinsed off and, and then organize them and use, used, I know people would collect um, uh, clamshell containers that she could then package things up nicely so that they could go to the food pantries and be better distributed to people. Um, and those, she'd always take pictures of, she's been doing that since year one of the garden. She'd take pictures of her yeah. garments and they're almost like mini works of art. They <laughs> they are her photos of, and then she would post those on Facebook. So, um, so you can kind of have an idea of um, what the harvest in harvest count is. She would keep everybody updated on how much we we're up to. So, and currently right now she is 
She has a lot of green tomatoes that we recently picked because the weather got so cold and she's uh, ripening them in her house. And she's got a lot of those potatoes, Joan, that you guys picked that yeah. she is um, hardening off so that they can be donated as well. So it's not like she, um, you know, donates everything and then it's gone. She, she lovingly cares for this, <laughs> these things. She's babysitting. Her. Yeah, she's exactly. babysitting. I should say too, that for anybody listening, if you have a question, please feel free to type your question in chat or um, you have a question, raise your hand <laughs> and we'll, I'll, I'll open your microphone if you prefer, if you can and ask it out loud, um, but please feel free to ask any questions along the way. Nancy, there actually yes. is a question. Oh, um, I did read it earlier. Yes. Jamie was asking us if the, um, the vermicompost that we got, if it was from the group of Conant High School kids that started their own business. And yes, that's exactly where we get our vermicompost from. Their, their name of their company is called Green Dirt. And um, they're a pretty amazing group of guys. They graduated from Conant High School a few years ago. They started the business while they were um, in high school and it's still going strong. And they sell that to various nurseries um, in the area and they also sell it online. So we're pretty excited to be able to, to use that. We had them here at the library for a, a maker day a few, couple, two or three years ago. And yeah, they are a really great group of young men who, um, have done really a great job starting that business up. So, and for, they collect food scraps from local restaurants. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, they collect food scraps that they then, for the worms, right? Is yeah. that right? <laughs> they feed it to their worms. Okay, yeah. So it's kind of a nice recycling project, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so all of this would not happen without volunteers helping out. And this year there were 21 people who volunteered in one way or another at the garden. And, um, and that's a good group of people. Yeah. And, uh, and, and there's such a variety of ways in which people can help out. So um, everything from the actual like moving of soil at the beginning of the season to planting and watering and weeding, to um, painting um, rocks <laughs> for the garden to decorate the garden. So I, I have to correct something in the video. Um, Emily is one of our volunteers here. She painted some of the rocks, but we also had another volunteer who painted some as well. So I didn't include that person's name, but um, those were just like nice little touches that both served a purpose for um, the ones Emily made were like marking different crops, beans and, and zucchini. Um, but then they were also just a nice little touch to beautify the garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, those were painted by Tamara, one of our new volunteers this year. Okay. Any other, um, I know we have, we have some, um, like the irrigation system that was we put in last year that's actually built into the beds that was put in by um, our local master gardener, Chris Dupra McCabe from um, Hill University of Illinois master gardener program, um, who also works for the forest preserve district um, or vol volunteers there. Um, is, and then, you know, we mentioned the hose, all the systems, the hose system improvements that were done by volunteers. Um, what would you say about like, are there more things that, well, we can actually, we'll talk about this later. Anything else that you would want to say about <laughs> things that volunteers did this year? Uh, you know, I think everybody, we've talked about all the different things, building the beds, fixing the garden beds, um, some people wrote thank you notes for us when we needed to send thank you notes. Someone, uh, she actually, not only did she write them, she designed them and um, handmade them and um, 
other people have um, helped us with, if we have an event, you know, help us with the food, setting things out, clean up, cooking, or, or um, potlucks. Of course, <laughs> I guess we can't do that right now. That was silly. <laughs> Hopefully next year. Yeah. <laughs> so really, yeah, and I, a I think, and weeding too. I mean, at the beginning, helping to get rid of that creeping Charlie that is just, all over the place we had a lot of people that came and weeded and even weed whacked around the garden that was a big day and a big cleanup day so that was really nice to have a lot of help thank you for bringing that up joan i did forget about that that was a nightmare we had some people specifically um come and spend hours pulling out the creeping charlie and it was not fun no, but very helpful. I, I think some of what you're seeing down here on the grass below Emily's feet is Creeping Charlie, if you're not sure where Creeping Charlie is. But yeah, yeah. there's a lot. <laughs> okay, um, so we already talked about issues we faced this year. We did, Michelle talked about COVID-19 and just kind of planning and figuring out how this year was going to go under the circumstances. But what about some of the other issues we faced this year? Like, were there, I mean, here's an example, this poor tomato. I know. This was determined to be maybe squirrels. I think or, we thought, I think we did think it was squirrels or maybe chipmunks. Um, because what would happen was we'd find these tomatoes way far away from the plant, like on the other side of the garden, like something picked it up and dragged it somewhere with these yeah. bites taken out of it. And that's something large enough to carry that is, I guess, probably a squirrel. Mm -hmm. So we had that issue. Um, we did not have aphids this year. We did have them last year. We got lucky. Mm -hmm. We did not have um, squash borers this year, yeah. which we, in the past, we've had a really big problem with them, but they didn't bother any of our squash this year. So honestly, we got, I think we got really lucky. Um, yeah. We didn't have a lot of pest issues. We just, like, like you mentioned before, we didn't get a lot of rain. Um, and we're not sure something, our irrigation system, we're, I, we're not sure if we're getting enough water from our irrigation system if it's if it needs to be expanded or if we need to change the way that we are using it or change the way that we're watering so we're going to look into that more next year mm -hmm. um, to determine how we can be sure that the garden is getting enough water okay. and so all of those things really kind of contributed to the fact that we had a, a less of a overall number of pounds grown in the garden this year but some of it was intentional because the way we the garden the the crops were um or the plants were placed in all but, but yeah and i would also say that we grew a lot of things a lot more this year of herbs so we donated a lot more herbs we donated a ton of beans like i think we donated more yeah. beans than that they knew what to do with we had a lot yeah. of beans um so it may not have been the weight that we were hoping for but i know we did donate different types of um produce that wasn't necessarily going to give us that um the yield as far as weight goes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, well, we're always looking for volunteers and, and really the, I think a point to make here is that, um, is that the whole, the starting project started as much as a, means of building community as it was about um, raising but growing vegetables for um, the food pantries. It was as much about 
building community, don't you think, Michelle? And that, I agree. you know, the idea was what, what could we do to bring people together to do something together? And um, so it, that's, you know, it, this year was a little awkward because you couldn't have like a big group of people there, although, you know, those people were socially distanced during um, mm -hmm. planting times and things. Yeah. But um, it is a way to meet new people. And I, I know pers from my own personal experience, I've met a very good group of people I'm thankful to have met because of this. And um, uh, it's just a nice way to be involved in the community. Um, Joan, how about you? Yeah, I would agree. It, you know, I came out of it not knowing anybody going into it. And um, unfortunately, with all the new volunteers that we had, there wasn't a way for us to get together like we would have one day in open house. So I didn't get to meet a lot of other people that did volunteer. So I'm hoping next year to be able to put some faces with some of these names. But I agree. I think every volunteer would probably say the same, that it was good for them to meet new people. I feel like we're all welcoming. We've all, we're all not experts, but we're all learning and we're all open to learning and, and receiving um, information, receiving helpful tips. So um, it's been great. It's been great. I totally agree with you, Joan. Um, I, and I was going to say, Nancy, I'm glad that you brought that up because that was one of our main things was let's, bring our community together and one of the things that we did not get to do this year which I think I feel the loss of it was we didn't have any partnerships um, this year in the past we've worked with um, an ups for downs young adult group they would come in a group of them and they would work in the garden we've had some of the preschool classes at the library come over. We've had the library junior teen advisory group work with us. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we had our open house. We had the Elk Grove Garden Club last year come to the garden. So it is something. Did you the preschool group or the, the, the not preschool, kinder, the younger kids? Did you mention Yeah. That? Yeah. The library preschool class. Um, yeah. So I think we missed I, I feel like that was something we really missed because that was a way that we partnered with other groups or organizations in the village. And mm -hmm. so not only did we not get to like be together as volunteers, I miss that, but I also missed the other partnerships that we had. And I did notice, and thank you, Jamie, for your comments. I, I think that was really nice that you said that Jamie said um, uh, the social media updates helped volunteers feel connected um, which I think was really nice we only wish we could have actually like you know made you feel connected actually face to face yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just there's something so nice about going over there and being there with a group of us and yeah. it, really great people um, so next year hopefully we'll be able to do that and I just wanted to also answer one of JB, Jamie's other questions Jamie asked, were the herbs well received? I had mentioned that we donated a lot more herbs this year. Um, and I will say, we will not know. Well, let me answer that in two ways. I know that Diane is pretty close with the people at the township food pantry. And if we were giving them something that maybe they didn't want, if people weren't taking it, I think they would probably tell Diane Mm -hmm. Would you guys agree? Yeah, so, I would agree. I think we would have heard from Diane if they were not being well received. Also, I know that Diane would um, occasionally put recipes in with the donations. So like mm -hmm. there's been a lot of basil this year. And so she was um, including recipes on how to make your own pesto with that or other recipes on how they could use uh, some of the things that we were donating. So I think that is helpful. She does send out a survey each year to all of the food pantries and she will ask them um, what, what would you prefer us to grow for you or not grow for you. So we'll probably hear more about that um, when she sends that survey out, but that's a really good question. So thank you. Okay. 
Um, and I was going to stress to the point that you were talking, somebody was saying about that you don't have to be an expert. Don't <laughs> <listen>. <laughs> because I know very little about gardening, really. We've learned from you guys. And um, I don't know if you noticed in the video, if you didn't get to see the video again, that will be posted so you can take a look again. But Michelle, Michelle created a video for the village on composting. Right, so you really Michelle, have become... no, no. Michelle did not create it. Oh, I wish Michelle I wish to create that. Hard in it. I was just a the talent, I guess. <laughs> and that that video was um, filmed at the garden, and you it shows our composting okay. bin, and you talk about, and you have really become an expert, or if you, in many ways, I mean, you've always been a gardening guru, but. <laughs> Thank you. You're very sweet. You're so kind. But the funny thing is, Nancy, like, really, I think all of us, I knew a little bit just from my own gardening, but I was by no means an expert. And all of us, don't you feel like we've learned so much each year? Because we can look back and say, okay, this worked, that didn't. And every year we learn something different. No, and, and to Joan's point, we go on YouTube and we read articles online and sometimes wow. watch a video and like, it doesn't even work for the experts. So yeah. it's all sort yeah. of live and learn, I guess. <laughs> it is. It is. Personally, I've had a bumper crop of tomatoes at my own house, which I never would have, I've never been successful with any vegetable plant at my house before. So, and I chalk that up to just being around people who know stuff at the garden. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, well, oh, I just wanted to kind of mention our, our watering schedule because this is one way that people can volunteer and the watering schedule. Um, so these are the people who um, this year agreed to be part of the watering schedule and, and they were put on a day with either by themselves or with a partner. And then on the, only on the odd number of days of the month. So Susan, Susan and I were on Fridays and we would only do Fridays that were the odd Fridays. So, and like in the month of um, August, I think there were two odd Fridays. So we did, you know, um, those Fridays, we would just kind of talk the day before and decide what time we were going to do it, whether in the morning or the evening. And then um, some, a couple of times we met there together, but uh, um, other times when we had, you know, our own schedules to contend with, we, um, like Susan might start, start, get it started. And then I would go back over there like two hours later and stop. And so we kind of shared the duties that way. And um, it was nice to have, to feel like you had a partner who you could ask a question to and, or do something, or you could go and sometime a couple, last time, last time we went, we went and watered together, um, watered some of the beds by hand with the um, storm. What do you, what do you call the, <laughs> with the water in the container? <laughs> Rain catchment. Thank you. So we watered out of that, and um, it was just kind of nice to do that with, with her that time. So um, that's kind of how the watering schedule works if you if anybody wanted to be part of that next year. Any, do you have anything to add? I didn't describe it too well, sorry. sorry. I'm so sorry, my battery was dying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I think you described it perfectly, Nancy. So it was good to, it, it was great to have, and I didn't do it this year. Um, that wasn't one of the things I did, but it's so good to have more volunteers to spread it apart. And then um, to have partners, I, it must have worked out really well for you guys. Mm -hmm. It was nice. Okay. So um, really that kind of just wraps it up. Um, we just wanted to, you know, kind of cap off the season um, with an overview of, of how it went. Um, you can kind of see from these pictures, this, this picture of the garden, I wish I had a, I should have put a picture here, how it looks, how it looked like at its, 
biggest and fullest mm -hmm. because it really was beautiful. You can see this is um, earlier, much earlier on, because this uh, arch got totally full of, of um, greenery. And um, I, I think somebody mentioned her. I mentioned that I'm like, that would be a good place to get married. <laughs> somebody should get married there. It was such a beautiful garden this year. Yeah, so it was. it's nice to see something so lush and beautiful right here. Um, and it was a, a happy place despite all the negativity yeah. going on elsewhere. So very true. Um, so we would just, we want to thank you all for um, zooming in tonight to hear about the garden. Um, does anybody else have any questions before we go? Otherwise, you know that you can um, you can go onto our Facebook page, um, which is called Living and Giving Garden of Elk Grove Village. You can follow us there, um, or you can shoot an email to. Would it be living living green and wait? Living green egv at gmail.com. Okay. Living green egv at gmail.com. But I think that's also showing on the Facebook page too. But oh, good. Yeah. I think, I think so. so. Oh, and if you're not on Facebook, then you can always contact me here at the library. Um, and, and, but anyway, you can, I hope you all know that you can. Um, contact us and get involved or just even come over and see the garden sometime uh, we're not all done yeah. so what's what's left to be done uh, there's still clean up and yeah. there's still things how would you say what's left over there uh, well we have some seed collecting to do um and then mostly we're just going to be pulling out plants very soon Mm -hmm. And then um, asking, begging people for their fall leaves uh, to put on top of the beds. And then that would be wrapping it up until next year, season five, which is going to be hopefully back to where we can be more together and, and have um, you know, like one of our garden parties, like we have had in the past, which was, which were fun. And, um, but no matter what, you know, hopefully you can come out and see the garden and be part of it in whatever way you would like to be part of it. And, um, please take a look at our video again. We'll post that, um, on the, it'll be posted on the libraries, Elk Grove Libraries, um, YouTube page, as well as our website. And um, you can also we'll post it on the on the gardens Facebook page as well. So, so thank you everybody for joining us, and um, we hope you have a good evening. And uh, see you at the garden. Bye everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Bye bye.